All right, guys, we are live, and this is going to be a fun one. I've uh, just been chatting uh, backstage with um, my male stripper, and uh, he's been filling me in on some of the uh, stories, some we won't even be able to tell tonight. So I can tell you right now, this is going to be a great show. This is episode number 87 of the Before the Trainwreck series. He's got seven shocking points is the way that he's labeled this here that, that we're going to dive into. Uh, these are essentially lessons that um, he learned while uh, doing bachelorette parties, working at male strip joints, uh, kind of touring around. And uh, he did this for a number of years. Um, this was this is, I guess, part of his red pilling, um, you know, beyond whatever it was that brought him to my channel. But um, I thought it'd be good to put him on the show tonight and let him expose or tell some uh, stories about what happens behind closed doors where. You got nothing to worry about, fellas. We're not going to do anything wrong, you know, is what the ladies will say before they run off to uh, Vegas for the weekend or, you know, the hotel for their bachelor party. So without any further uh, delay, um, I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to pull in my guest. Uh, actually, before I do, do me do me a huge solid, guys. Uh, first of all, smash the like button. And if you're watching this anywhere else but YouTube right now, just drop the link for you to come over to YouTube. It helps me out a ton with the algorithms. Just hit that and join me there. Mike, what's up, brother? Hey, Rich. How are you doing? I appreciate you having me out. Big fan of yours, so it's a pleasure to be on your show. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I appreciate you reaching out. I, I get DMs from time to time from... Actually, I get DMs daily from uh, people on different social media platforms. And, you know, there's always something that stands out. And for you, it was like, you know, the whole red pilling tied into what you saw, you know, as a male dancer working bachelorette parties and strip joints. I was like... I got to hit this guy up and see if he wants to uh, do this one live. So thanks for uh, sharing the stories. We're going to keep you anon, of course. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with Magic Mike tonight. And um, there's a nice picture there of a, looks like a UK phone box. <laughs> yeah, um, just because of you know different groups I've worked with and some of the guys I worked with are still doing it for a profession. You know, I just don't want to throw anyone under the bus. And we'll say for. For, for legal reasons, these are all made up stories that I just cooked up on my own. So these are all fabricated. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mike's a real deal. I've, I've uh, clicked through on his social. He sent me some links of um, him, him kind of playing around with some uh, ladies at a, a party. Um, so I can absolutely verify that uh, this guy is solid and knows exactly what he's talking about. Um, the first question I wanted to ask you before we kind of get into these points here, um, because the biggest like blue pill lie that I see a lot of guys say, a lot of guys, oh, you know, you just got to trust your wife. You just got to let her, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, whatever, just let her go and have fun with the girls. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Um, the worst that could possibly go wrong is if you've emotionally and financially invested in a woman, maybe you've married her and then she goes outside of the relationship and cheats on you. What, what, what percentage of the ladies in your experience as you were working at these clubs and bachelorette parties would actually cheat on their boyfriends, husbands, partners, spouses. Like if there was 20 of them there, like, was it half? Like what, what was the number there for that? I would say the majority of them would step outside the relationship, do things that I wouldn't constitute cheating because you're at a show. You're not actually taking them home. It's not some random guy at the bar, but things that if they did it elsewhere would upset a lot of people. I would say of those people, there would I'd say at least a quarter would entertain at the minimum um, an emotional affair with whoever they're with. And of those, at least half are willing to go home. With it, it, it's never a shortage of girls who are willing to do stuff that would get anyone, you know, a divorce papers. For them. It's just it's unreal how easy and how willing people are to do this. We hear all day about men. Oh, yeah, men go to Vegas to get strippers, hook up with strippers. But you never hear the other side of the coin. And I'll tell you what, I've been to my buddy's bachelor parties. They're pretty tame compared to some of the parties I've been to. And I'd say the vast majority, there are people who are definitely reaching for something outside their regular relationship. So if you got a group of 20 women, you're saying about five of them would go outside of their marriage, their uh, relationship with their boyfriend? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So there you go. It's about a quarter. Um, what's... I don't know, throw it, throw us a crazy story. Like what's, what's one of the craziest things that happened in, in that time that you spent doing that where you're like, you know, you kind of blew your hair back and you're like, whoa, I wasn't really expecting to see that happen tonight. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of thought a few of my stories and I always relate back to my first year. And I think because that's when I saw the shock factor when this stuff people actually live this way. 
right? Because everyone thinks, oh, only a certain crowd goes to strip shows. I just say the vast majority, 89%, only go to strip shows once. It's someone's birthday, it's someone's bachelorette, someone got tickets. This is everyone from all walks of life, right? Like, I, I live in the States, but, you know, I've toured up in Canada. I've toured, toured all over the U.S. People are the same everywhere you go. Um, they're just you're just looking for something different. But one of my first experiences is I was down south, and my buddy and I were new to the scene, and we went home with these girls. I went out and go home, went out to the bar after with these girls. And the girl I was going with, she said she's broke up with her boyfriend, which he didn't know they were just broke up. And my buddy had a girl who was, you know, she was probably dating every guy in the town. She just didn't care. He knew it was a done deal before the show even started. And another girl was the bachelorette. She was getting married in two weeks. Well, we're all walking to a different bar. And uh, the girl I'm with, her boyfriend comes, picks her up. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Hey, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. And um, my buddy's like, well, I kind of want to go back to the hotel. And the bride to be says well i'll come join you guys and i'm thinking oh yeah yeah you know guys and girls can be friends when i believe that was a real thing um so <laughs> we go back to the hotel and she's like can i hang out in your room well they go do their thing i'm like yeah absolutely I, at this point i see no problem in it right i have platonic female friends um i, I understand that other people do but as i got more red pull i realized it's not the reality it just we're waiting to turn so anyways my buddy's having fun with her and they get drunk and that's supposed to be their DD. She says, Hey, can I stay the night here? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, at this point I'm like, okay, what's this girl's attentions? Well, as the night progresses, well, she wasn't engaged anymore and whatever happened and uh, fall asleep. And I wake up to this phone call and she tells me to be quiet. It's her, it's her fiance calling from Minneapolis uh, saying he couldn't get a hold of her all night. And she's like, honey, I went to bed at 10 30 after the show. Where have you been? I've been worried sick. And then she starts giving him shit for going to strippers, accusing him of cheating. And, and then it's off the phone. And I'm like, what the hell was that? Because mind you, the reason why I did have sex with her is because she said that they have kind of like, you know, a hall pass for the one last time. Being pretty well, apparently that wasn't true. She had a hall pass. So. So, so, she, so she gets a call in the morning from her boyfriend and she turns the table or t- tables around and accuses him of, the very thing that she was doing absolutely i always tell you guys when somebody points the finger at you they've got three fingers pointing back at themselves okay question that always yeah all right let's um let's dive into this so we got number one uh every woman has a price whether it be physical emotional social status impressing her peers competing with her peers or financial games explain what you mean by that so everyone's got a price, right? Everyone, some people it's a really cheap price. Sometimes it takes a perfect storm and every possible condition to make it happen. But like anytime you get a government job or anything with high security, they check if you have that, if you have any way that you can easily persuade the give up sensitive information. So when it comes to women, there's always going to be a price. Sometimes it's just attention. Hey, they're not getting it at home. And that's what like, you know, as dancers, we're just selling that fantasy. Attention they don't get physical. Hey, they got a guy who hasn't worked out since, you know, grade 12 gym class. They got a guy six foot two, you know, abs, big arms, you know, everything she reads in a romance novel. You got other people who cross a guy, hey, maybe he's a hockey player, maybe this guy's a lawyer, a doctor, whatever the social status is. Versus their guy who's making a buck over a minimum wage, right? So she sees that. And back to that guy, too. He's making you know, a, um, our six-figure income versus, you know, barely paying the bills. So that that's appealing. Whatever it is, there's always going to be something that's going to sell her to step out, out of her normal realm of what her morals are. Right? And do something that she normally wouldn't do because this other guy's got something that's just appealing. Like your hypergamy. You're always talking about that with this woman. It's just a perfect example of it. You know, they come to these shows, see guys pretending to be real heroes, pretending to be firefighters, pretending to be cops, get more gratification recognition than the real heroes get. And guys are probably making not that much. And they're willing to throw away everything just you know, to have a round or two with this guy that could care less about them. And and really what it is is just finding the deal. And and as we know. Uh, social media, a half decent woman with edited, filtered pictures, what's a picture, you know, hey, I, I got no sleep tonight, but I still look beautiful. Or, you know, and then you got all these losers hitting them up. You, you got the same thing with the women too, right? You just give them a little bit of that gratification and uh, you just find out what they want. And it, it can be outside of stripping. You can sell any girl anything you want. 
And, and that's how easy it is. It's not just that these strip fields. It's just, this is just a prime breeding ground to see how dirty people are when you're not looking. Mm. So the stripper, it's the lawyer she's falling for next week. So um, when it comes to these type, type of um, gatherings, like you said earlier on that, you know, compared to um, strip joints or bachelor parties that you've been to, like men are tame compared to women, right? Absolutely. The things that men do are very mild in comparison. And I'm not even talking just, just the way they act, encouraging others. Women will encourage their best friend that steps outside of a relationship just because it seems like a good time tonight. And do they all figure that, you know, because we're all together and, you know, it's a bachelorette's party or what happens in Vegas or what happens in New York just stays there, you know, stays there for the weekend? Like, do they feel like there's that level of blanket security? And that, and that's what it is. You know what? A girl will never rat out another girl. You know, if, if a girl sees a guy she wants and she knows he's in a relationship and he says, hey, I'm in a relationship, if she still wants it, she's going to go for it. If she knows he's in a relationship and he denies it, she'll just tell everyone, oh, my God, I didn't know. So mm -hmm. they, they always look out for their own. They don't want to look sleazy. They're not going to rat their friends out. And they're not going to rat their friends out because they encourage it. They told them to do it. I'd say about 80% of the time, girls go home with one of the guys because they're pushed into it by their girlfriends. I mean, they're doing it by their own free will, but that's the deciding factor, right? And that's where I talk about this whole, the, the social image, right? Like, you know, impressing her peers. And that's why they'll do it. Um, if I would go to a group of girls, say there's five girls who are really attractive and there's always that one girl who just doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the mother hen. That's going to be the boss. There's a reason to put those four attractive girls. If she's getting laid, everyone's getting laid. If she ain't getting laid, no one's getting laid. So if you if you suck up to her and you make her night, you can encourage everyone else to do whatever you want. Do do women behave differently at private bachelorette parties versus like a strip joint? Like if a few women get together at a at a male strip joint for the night, is is it different behavior from a bachelorette party where they reserve like a hall and a couple of guys show up and jump out of a cake and all that? Yeah, it, it's it's uh, comparable, but it's pretty different. You know, when you go to the strip show, most of the time when it's over, like I said, the majority of the crowd's like, oh, cool. Well, you know, I stepped out of my relationship a little bit, got a lap dance, slapped some ass, whatever. I'm going home. I'm good, right? But when you're at the bachelorette party, you kind of get like that mob mentality. One person does it and they all start doing it. There's no time limit. There's no leaving. There's no show. You're already at home. You know, you already run from the bar to the home. You're already at the place where it's going to happen. Every single time I've done one of those parties, other than a handful, there's always been an opportunity. There's always been a girl slipping me a number. There's always been a girl asking for a private dance that wants more than a dance. There's always something going on. And, uh, you know, as I progressed in my career, I stayed further and further away from that because nothing good can happen from that because they got boyfriends, they got husbands. More than likely, that boyfriend or husband owns that house that you're in, and it's going to be bad news for you, even though she's the one who suggested it and consented to it, right? So you got to blame the guy every time. Mm. So in my 20s, I used to work at this um, collection agency, and there was this girl that that sat behind me who looked like Andre the Giant. She had, you know, that, that like growth, like that growth hormone head sort of thing. Um, she would go to strip joint, strip joint all the time, and she kept encouraging me to come with her and work as a stripper at her favorite place. I just looked at her and I'm like, "There's no way that I'm going to be around you or anybody that looks like you, you know, for an evening, especially naked." Like, what do these women typically look like in these environments? Are they attractive or are they mostly like not attractive? Like, what are you dealing with in these spaces? You got the whole buffet. You got everyone there. You got the shy, quiet girl. You got the wild party girl. You've seen more Hawkins and weekends. You see it all. But I would say the most aggressive girls there are, you know, slightly above average to slightly below average. You know, they got all their little followers on Instagram that like their edited filters that and these sincerely believe they are tens mm. and they sincerely believe that attention is real just it's better quality attention than they're used to getting and those will be the most aggressive girls looking for whatever you want let's let's um move on to the second point women are chameleons uh they have pol polar opposite values based on what about on what benefits them mm -hmm. so what i mean by that is you'll have someone come to the show when they'll be conservative they'll be well put together you know in their everyday life but when they go to the show you know they're wild they're partying they're doing all the crazy stuff kind of like that girl who i brought home and 
she started yelling at her fiance, you know, saying she been in bed, you know, we kind of put on a different image. Um, it, it brings me to a point where um, I had told you in our prior um, conversation about that high profile wedding I did. Uh, we brought the girls home, you know, we did our thing with them and it was all encouraged by the bridesmaids and everyone else. And then the next day at the wedding, or not next day, sorry, the next week at the wedding, uh, we got invited to be ushers, which was <laughs> kind of ironic because then we got to meet the boyfriends that apparently didn't exist and uh, fiancés and husbands, and whatever else um, that we didn't know about. And they're giving speeches. This was the bachelorette party that you went to where there was only two women out of all of them that didn't go outside of the relationship? Correct. And how many women were there in total at the bachelor party? 20, 21, 22. 21, 22. So basically 19 of the 22 went outside of the relationship. Yes. When and you say like outside of the relationship, like are we talking about like touching the dude? Are we talking about performing oral? Are we talking about like the whole nine yards? Uh, anywhere between performing oral and the whole nine yards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, fellas. Yeah, send send your girlfriend off to that bachelorette party. Have fun with that. <laughs> Guys like Magic Mike will take care of them. And then they'll show up at your wedding a week later as one of the ushers. <laughs> you know, m mind you, my morals have changed. That was near 10 years ago, my very early 20s. But, um, I mean, hey, you know, 22 years old and you got a buffet of women throwing themselves at you. Who's going to say no to that? Mm. All right. But, um Talk about your third point. Uh, what happens if strip shows and bachelorette parties couldn't happen in your wildest rock star fantasies? Okay, so back to kind of like the last story I said, you were sort of 19 out of the 21, 22 girls were down for whatever. Um, things like that happen. I remember the first time I went to a show and there's a guy I've been around forever. He brought five different girls backstage and to meet the guys, you know, oil them up, whatever. And then he said, hey, let's have a titty, titty lineup. See who's got the best tits. They get a t-shirt. And he said, you know what? I'll even one up it. Whoever shows their pussy and has the best one can go on stage for free during the show. And, you know, I thought he was joking. Well, without hesitation, there you go. They're all lining up and showing that. I, I couldn't believe this was real life. I couldn't believe people actually did this. And they do. This isn't like a few and far between. This is semi-regular thing that happens at these events. Really? Wow. Okay. Um, what? What other stuff did you see? Like, you're talking about rock star stuff, like wildest rock star fantasies. Like, what else did you see? Oh, I mean, it was there's never a question. Like, I've seen guys, you know, have lineups of girls outside their door waiting their turn. I can think of a few times on occasion where. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. You, you seen guys have a lineup of girls outside of the door waiting for their turn to be with him? Yeah. Like, How long uh, is I don't know. See, I was more, I was really picky. I was like the high quality girls, right? You know, I really wanted just the really one hot girl for the night. But I had a couple of buddies who just, they're breathing, they're walking, they're coming home. You know, you're a legal consenting adult, let's do it. And my one buddy, this is a true story. I'm not even lying about this. We're in Missouri and it is just a dive of a bar. And um, there's this, you know, most ratchet, disgusting women I've ever seen. I mean, it's Missouri, right? <laughs> no, not going to go from Missouri, but this part of Missouri was bad. And um, everyone takes off, and there's two vehicles. And one person thought I was with one guy, and the other thought I was the other guy. So I call the boys. I'm like, hey, you left me at the club. And they're like, well, there's some chicks to drive you home. They're just all drunk. They're being dicks. I'm the new guy in the crew, so I'm kind of like, you know, the bottom of the barrel. So I found these two girls that seemed nice, and I said, hey, do you want to come party at the hotel with the boys? If you do, give me a ride. It's about a 20-minute ride. So I brought them all back. There's eight of them, and uh, I, I shove them off to my buddy's room. And my other buddy, he found the sorority girl who invited all her sorority sisters, and they paid the kid at the front desk to open up the pool. So I go round up all the guys that come down to the pool party, and I go to my buddy. Uh, we'll say his name Ken, we'll leave it at Ken. Ken, and he's in there and he's got seven girls on the bed, one on his bed, waiting their turn. He's getting a round out of each of them. Well, uh, there you have it. I guess you I guess you're that's that's basically the definition of running a train. <laughs> <laughs> Except for it's not a bunch of guys running a train on one girl, it's a bunch of girls running a train on one dude. Mm -hmm. I have seen girls go door to door because we usually get our own room, right? They'll go from mm -hmm. one door to the next, to the next, to the next, you know, because they got everyone's number before the show and they don't tell them that they're at 
you know, this guy's room or Mike's room or whoever's room, right? Or Donnie's room. They just text, hey, I'm at the hotel. Let me see you, right? And, they, and I watch go door to door. Go home with one guy, leave with another in the morning. Did, like, like when they were, um, when they were going outside of their relationship, these women and, you know, having sex with the male strippers, um, like, are they using condoms or are they just like raw dog in the whole thing? <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I don't think condoms are a common use with some of these guys. I mean, it's just the reality and like, they wouldn't even ask half the time. I mean, I had to initiate it myself. In my case, I always had to be the one bringing it up. It was very rare for someone to ask if you had one. They're just, most people are ready to go. And I think it's just right. kind of the culture we live in. People are just right. like, if I get pregnant, I'll get an abortion. If I get an STD, I'll take a pill. Did did any of these girls ever get pregnant by any of these strippers while they were in a marriage or anything? Oh, oh, absolutely. I have worked with some of the lowest pieces of shit when I was down south uh, with a couple of the crews. And there'd be guys that have a wife home in Canada or up north in the northern states and hitting up with this girl, hitting up with that girl. I, I've had different girls email me and ask for this guy's contact if she's pregnant. And it, it happens all the time. And, you know, I um, was one case and it unfortunately the little girl did have a miscarriage. Uh, this girl I know hooked up with my boss at the time. She gets pregnant. She had a fiance of four years, and they had been trying for two years to get pregnant. So she just thought it was her. So my buddy raw dogs her, gets her pregnant, while her her fiance is off to work for six weeks. Um, my 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 uh, buddy at the time is definitely um, he's a different ethnicity than her actual fiance. So she's like, oh shit, how am I going to explain this one? Okay. But, uh, unfortunately, you know, she was scared, which, you know, I mean, good for him, but unfortunately, because it's never a positive experience for anyone. And uh, went right back to loving that guy. They're married and continuing life as, as it is now, like nothing ever happened. Did, did any of these women ever pass off the baby as, you know, their husbands or their boyfriends, even though it came from the stripper? I know for a fact, one guy I worked with, um, he got a girl pregnant. He was in a long-term relationship. Essentially, the girl took care of all his bills. He lived with her. And the other girl came to the show. And the only reason I know about this is because she reached out to me to get his contact, which obviously I said, I messaged him and said, you got to get a hold of this girl. I'm not getting in between this. And she got pregnant. She was with a guy. And they agreed upon each other that it'd be best that they just don't tell anyone. The kid to this day looks just like him. Wow. There are other, these guys are getting other girls pregnant. And I, I mean, the reality is this is their whole train of thought on this. You're with a guy for four or five years, you, you bang some random stripper who probably doesn't have a pot to piss in. Uh, why would you throw that away on the possibility that you just might not be a dad? They're just going to shut up, have the baby, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, cuckoldry is a lot more common than what, than what guys think. I mean, um, uh, I'm not that surprised that, um, you know, these women try to try to pawn off, you know, the alpha seed as the, uh, you know, as a beta's child, but, uh, yeah, you know, there you have it. There's just, there's just more confirmation. Um, let's, let's keep moving down these points. You got point number four here where you're talking about the fantasy goes beyond the show. Most women will take a half step outside their relationship and do things that would not universally constitute cheating. Um, what, what wouldn't universally constitute cheating? If you can just define that just for clarity. Well, see, a lot of people think that, you know, you get a lap dance, you, you know, touch the guy's chest, you grab jazz, whatever on stage. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the show. That's the only time it ever take place. It's to get cheers from the girls. And, and mind you, you know, people feed off the energy. That's what we do. We feed off the energy. When I'm with the more professional groups, it's all stage show, barely any contact, if any. And I get it. I get that. Right. So, so it's hard to say, yeah, she, yeah, no one's going to divorce their wife because she got a lap dance and that's it, you know, mm -hmm. but when the actual teams like straight up, you know, hooking up with the guy, oral sex, full out mm -hmm. sex, you know, give him a phone number, having him like a, an emotional affair for whatever time, like sending pictures, mm -hmm. which is crazy common. It is so common. And then you uh, carry on with that point. You say, uh, but would raise questions, but once the show is over, the majority go back to reality but a good share of the women uh, and not even just the low value women will hold into that fantasy for months or even years to keep. Yeah. So these guys are basically alpha widowing women at a bachelorette party. You know what an alpha widow is, right? Yes. 
Yeah. So, so like you guys are basically alpha widowing these women at a, at a bachelorette party in one night, just showing up d- dressed up as a firefighter and a police officer with handcuffs and a uniform. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Back to what it is. <laughs> it would be, they beat us or the same guy in Burgess, Mike or Chris or whoever else, you know, but because of the scenario, because of the social value, the girl's competing over this guy. And now she's queen bitch. You got this 35 year old who outdid the hot young 20 year old. I got this hot young 20 year old who outdid this lawyer 35 year old at competition. You know, the young girl's like, oh, my looks trump her money. Or the girl's 35 is like, oh, I'm 35. I still got it. I beat these young girls. They just feel like they are the shit. They're better than everyone. And they just lock themselves into and they put us on a pedestal even more than Sims will put girls on a pedestal. It's crazy. Interesting. Um, let me just grab these super chats here real quick. Jerry Oaksmith says he's talking about our mothers, sisters, exes, and current partners. Cold hard truth, fellas. It's true. I mean, you know, if you take a look around at many of the women that you know in your life, um, I would I would say the vast majority of them over the age of 30 have, have been to at least one bachelorette party. So they've been exposed to exactly what magic Mike's talking about here tonight. Uh, Donald gray says, um, exactly why I tell every dude always get a DNA test. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Always get a DNA test. You don't want to get cucked. Um, point number five, you said beta males make your job easier. What do you mean by that? So I always find I've been to shows and it'll be the confident guy picks up his girl then the night. We'll try to put an extra 20 in her pocket, shake her hand, but like, man, you're awesome. My wife had such a good night. Thank you. And you know what? That girl's never going to stray because he's probably confident all the time. He's not doing his thing. They're, they're good. But the guy who is sending us messages, messaging his girl a hundred times, you better not touch a guy. You're done. You're going to lap dance where you're doing after. He just handing her to us on a silver platter. And, and I find these, these, these simps, there's those guys, the insecure guys. And then there's the simps who will just bow before this woman knowing she's got multiple plates spinning and she'll add us to Facebook during the show. They'll find us during the show and I'll look and it'll be some edited selfie where the guy looks like a wuss because he's got a filter on too. And I know she's a narcissist. I got to cater to her ego. It's a done deal. As soon as I acknowledge her, as soon as I tell her what she wants to hear, it's done and over with. Or also with those girls, the other thing I found too is the girls with the egos, they right away think you're there because they're hot. They think it's their show. As soon as you kind of ignore them, they will do anything for your attention. They will chase you. They'll hunt you down. Uh, one story of mine, I was in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and I met this absolutely gorgeous Southern Belle. Just beautiful, right? Really hitting it off with her. And then um, I met another girl. But she was with my buddy, and they're both can come to the hotel. Well, that was my roommate. I'm like, well, that's a dumb deal. But you know what? This girl's a little bit of an upgrade. I'm not going to meet any of these girls. Might as well have the prettier one, right? And I already invited her to go get some food with me after. Oh, sorry. She invited me. Um, so we all go out there, and we pull up to the IHOP where we're going to eat. And the, the pen, we'll say the pen, or the really, the really attractive girl, it's like, hey, hold on one second. I'm like, hey, what's up? She's like, um, so – are you inviting me or am I inviting you? I'm like, what do you mean? You just asked if I want to get food. And she's like, well, where I'm from, the gentleman pays. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, where I'm from, uh, it's 50-50. If, if, if you want, there's about a thousand other girls that show will pay for my dinner, but I'm going to pay my own. And and she's like, walks in. She walks in behind me. And she's like, uh, well, I don't think I'm going to get anything. I didn't realize at the time she just didn't have money, right? But I thought it was an entitlement thing. So, so we go there and we're sitting down and then the two girls were with my buddy sitting across from me and, uh, she's still a really pretty girl. And I said, Hey, I got a question down South here. Does the guy always pay for the girl? Are you guys living in the time it was 2017 or do you guys live in 2017 where, uh, women have decency and take care of themselves? You know, Oh, I'll pay yours if you want. I'm like, Oh, that's great. You know, I'll pay my own, but you know what? You want to come hang out with me after? So I just blew off the pen right in front of her. The pen drives me to the hotel. And I said, it was very nice meeting you. Have a good night. And she asked me if I could give her a few bucks for gas. <laughs> and I said, okay. Well, you can't afford your own gas. Um, you went to the show. She's like, yeah. So I felt bad for her. I gave her five bucks just because I felt bad for the girl. I, I, go, I go into the hotel. I have my fun with that girl. My buddy's got his girl. And my phone's blowing up. And I check in the morning, 
and I look and it's the girl. Hey, can I come over? Can I come see you? I'm sorry. Uh, did you kick that girl? She comes over right after knowing what I did all night and wants her turn too. Number six, moving on. <laughs> uh, her friends, they can be your biggest obstacle or can gift wrapper and serve it to you on a silver platter. Explain that. Well, like I was saying, when you go to a group of girls, there's always, you know, the one mother hen. She always kind of runs the crew. Right? Um, she can make or break, whether it's a good night or a bad night. And that's the same thing at these private parties, right? If there are these girls looking to step outside the relationship and kind of like the alpha of the crew, Yes, it. it is going for it. But if you rub her the wrong way, no one's going home with you. I had a night where I was, this one girl's all over me, very beautiful girl. And her friend was kind of the bigger, you know, less attractive one. I was like, hey, she's got a boyfriend. You got to leave her be. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. You know, it's just part of the show. And I started talking to her and I started asking her, she's got a boyfriend, everything like that, because I could tell she wanted me instead. And I said, well, hey, I got a buddy who's single. I get my buddy over there. Not only did she look up with my buddy, she encouraged her friend to dump her boyfriend and go home with me. So the girl, she's originally saying no, because now, now it's the balls and her court and going to her favor. Well, <laughs> I guess that makes a big difference, you know. Well, at least she has the decency to dump him first, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, and that's something I always say, too, with my experience as a dancer. Um, these guys will get dumped by girls. So unless the guy cheated, did something stupid to justify a breakup that he's trying to get her to forgive, she's dumping him because she's already on to another guy. And mm -hmm. she's already been with another guy for a long time. I always tell these guys, don't go back to your girl. I don't know how many times I've had these girls, you know, they have boyfriends, they hook up with one of the dancers, and now they're telling the guy, hey, I'm not into you anymore. It's not working out. They don't say, hey, I just cheated on you. Say, it's not working out. And this guy's chasing her, pouring his heart out to her, trying to get her back. And then when she realizes that fantasy is not happening anymore, she goes right back to him. It doesn't say she's had, you know, Chad plow through her a couple of times. Yeah, I find that hilarious when women are just like, oh, it's not you. It's, you know, it's just me. Meanwhile, guys like Magic Mike are rearranging her insides uh, <laughs> and then sending her home in the morning, right? Um, what kind of uh, notch count did you rack up doing, doing this uh, job? Um, <laughs> it's pretty high. Um, I won't say Wilt Chamberlain, but, uh, definitely more, more girls in our days. Mm -hmm. And number seven, uh, the arrogance and entitlement that these women have. So th this was your last point and it says, and what lengths they'll go to, to show off to their friends and what reactions they'll have when they realize they're no longer dealing with sex driven beta males. And the tables are turned, how they go from overly entitled women with an overly blown sense of worth to begging for acknowledgement. Explain that one. So you 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 always see these girls, whether it be a party, whether it be a show, I mean, any social setting, you're going to see it. You're going to see the girl who just thinks she's the shit. And she usually isn't, but she thinks life owes her. You know, you say hi to her, you're hitting on her. You give her the time of day, she's you're into her. That's kind of the thought she has. And when these women realize that, hey, you're just there for the money, or they're just one of 100 other girls who are six out of 10, it, they really, their ego gets crushed. And they go, like, I've been rude. I've told girls straight off because I don't buy into their attitude. I don't buy into their entitlement. I don't buy their shit. Um, and then as soon as you tell them off, like that girl that, I, that couldn't pay for her own dinner and want me to pay for hers, they come begging after you. They wait in the door the next morning. And normally they could see a guy looks just like me and it'd make me chase her or the other guy chase her, whatever right it, it's just an ego and they don't like it when it gets crushed what like would you do this all over again um i think i think it was a really good experience um mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it i really got to see what's out there and it kept me from falling into some of the footsteps that guys that just get you know by these women um, I've never been married, and at this point in life, I don't see why I would unless someone is on the exact same level. Because usually I see all these guys, you know, they get married, and these women at the show, they will have a husband home. They'll be, you know, full-time mommies, their career. Meanwhile, their kids are in school. So, well, you know, they're little trolls working all day, paying all their bills, paying their lifestyle, getting their hair, their nails done. She's texting Mike or John or whoever she actually wants to be with, send nudes to them, you know, going on uh, girls' trips, which are vacation for him 
on our husband's dime. And I, I did need to learn that experience and it did get me a little more driven. So yeah, I definitely would have done it again. I just wouldn't do it any further. I've got all I can out of it. And, you know, I've taken my red pill and I know what's important in life. Um, what advice would you give to guys who are considering a career in, uh, you know, mail stripping, doing bachelorette parties, working at mail strip joints and stuff like that? I wouldn't recommend it. It's it's a very toxic environment. Other than one guy I worked up for in Canada, one down south, um, all the owners are the the dirtiest people you ever meet. Um, there's nothing positive that can come from it. Like it's a good experience, but it's it's very fake. It's kind of like Instagram pictures. Edit is fake. You get that attention for that night. You go to Walmart the next day. You're just another normal guy, right? And these mm -hmm. guys that work with cannot function without their invalidated so i don't think it's good in that sense i think it's a blast if you want to do it for a summer do it for a year do it for two years but it's definitely not a career there's no long long term gains out of it if anything it, it slows down your progress in life so now I, I left when i was 31 um you know i have an education i have a lot to fall back on but most of these guys age out of it and now you're starting life at 40 45 which isn't too late to start life but you could be light years ahead if you started earlier I think it's good. I think it's a good time, but I don't think it's a career. What was the most that you made in a year uh, stripping? Um, it, it's hit and miss. Um, but I, 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 my best month ever was twenty three grand. And that's all and cash that's all, too, right? That's all cash. That's all U.S. cash. Um, if you you're on a good crew, like when the Magic Mike movie came out, we had more money. Than we know what to do with, and that's like that's living life. That's like buying nice meals, paying for gyms every day. You know, flying home, going on little vacations. You probably, if you're a really successful dancer, probably make about maybe eighty to hundred thousand. But your average guy is probably making forty. I know some guys who are just living paycheck to paycheck dancing. So, so like, what does an average night pay pay if you were to work like a bachelorette party? Bachelorette party, um, anywhere from two to four hundred plus tips. Okay, so I mean, you could get upwards of a thousand bucks or more. Oh yeah, oh yes. No, my biggest party ever, I made eighteen hundred. Wow, but you, pretty good. But if if you advertise well, you got a good name, good reputation, and, and see that's the thing. Like I live my wild years, my first start, but as I progressed, I saw as a business first, you know, free party, I started making way more money instead of having one night where I do a party and have fun with the girls all night. I do three or four parties a night. That's a fifteen hundred dollar, two thousand dollar night. Yeah, sure, you don't got uh, the stories, to tell, but hey, money, money's better at the end of the day. And last question for you, Mike. Um, you found the girl of your dream. She's perfect. She ticks off all the boxes. You're going to get married and put a baby in her. Are you going to let her have a bachelorette party? <laughs> uh, not with strippers. Not with Vegas strips. Uh, and, and, you know, in agreement, I wouldn't do it either. All right. Um, I'm just going to pull you out. Uh, just hang out in the backstage for a minute. Just going to wrap up the show. So just uh, hang tight. Thanks, Mike. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Um, I've, I've got so many more questions, but uh, the audio is not great. So I just keep, you know, muting myself to try to make sure there's as little feedback as possible. But man, that was like 36 minutes of some red pilling right there. If you didn't, if you didn't wake up to some of those stories, I don't know what else to tell you. That's, that's probably one of the mo most profound uh, conversations I've had in a long time in this channel. Um, do me a huge solid guys, uh, smash the like button, comment below again. It always helps me out with the algorithms. And uh, real quick, I got a shout out to the uh, channel sponsor, the uh, Grondike Soap Company, just over my shoulder here. Uh, you can go to coopersoap.com or after the show renders, I'll pin it in the top comment. So pin in the top comment, you'll have links for the uh, for the channel sponsor. If you check out with coupon code Cooper, you'll get 10% off. It's pheromone infused, handmade uh, soap, pheromone infused sticks, beard oils, they all kinds of great products. Check it out. Uh, you're showering anyways, you might as well use something that supports the creation of content like this so I can bring in other interesting uh, guys for more conversations. So check out those uh, pin links in the top comment for community, coaching, all that sort of stuff. Uh, again, thanks guys for watching. Mike, you're in the backstage. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.